All right, what is going on, everybody? We are back. It's the original gamer Stevie Strode, joined by Curtis Boyle and Nick Morentes. Oh, I lost all my people. So ah. we have been talking about games with semi-graphics, and one of the games that Nick talked about in our introduction to this series was a game called Guardian, which is a great Defender clone for the color computer here. And one of the things that Nick mentioned, and you will see here by looking at this, is that this game looks a lot like the arcade game. It's got a great use of color. It scrolls. It's got great use of sound. But this is a very typical, very classic semi-graphics game. Um, Curtis and I actually did a, f a longer playthrough on this, but we're going to show you a lot of the games that use the mode here. And um, this was one of the games that made the color computer look like it could actually generate color, which was, as Nick mentioned before too, not all games really showcased a lot of color. And they always look similar. This looks like an arcade game. It plays like an arcade game. This game is Guardian. Anything you guys want to throw into the commentary there before we move on to I, our next one? I will one? throw in one thing, and I think I mentioned it in the previous recording of Guardian we did. Is this uses a semi-graphics mode that most people didn't even know existed until they disassembled the game. It's actually got an overscan on the borders that uh, none of the other modes, including I think the one Nick used in uh, Neutroid, uh, did not use. In fact, I think it's the only game that used it as far as I know. Okay. And, and I believe the, believe the way you explained that was is that the screen is wider than we see it. Yeah, and you so almost got some... a viewport into the screen. You've got some extra bytes on the sides that they won't ever show up, and then you can use that to run your characters and stuff off of that and do a bunch of clipping checks. And... Right, 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 right. So, so basically um, you can actually draw further beyond the uh, left and right borders, but yeah. the black border of the video chip is always sitting on top. So... So uh, characters that roll off the left and right go under the border. Yep. yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that was Guardian. We're gonna, we got many more to show you, but you can see here that semi graphics looks pretty good. It's pretty colorful. When you look at the lasers being shot here, it's a very skinny line. This looks almost arcade uh, precise to how Defender looked. A very skinny kind of staggered line. Um, you know, you can see some of the choppiness in the mountain range. That's not quite as good. It's a very pronounced kind of staircase, but uh, it's not very distracting from the game. Overall, what, you know, what we were kind of talking about is that if a game is written well and it plays well, the, the graphics aren't everything. The gameplay and the overall package is par part of the whole is what makes a game a really good game. G'day everybody, we are continuing our semi-graphic game showcase. I'm the original gamer Stevie Stroh, joined by Curtis Boyle and Nick Marentes. Hello. G'day. And G'day. the game we're looking at now is Protector, another semi-graphics game, another somewhat inspired uh, Defender clone. And um, we have a rocket base, we've got level 1, press enter, restart game, press X, pause game, press... Oh, we can change the level? One, two, three... A oh, level select, press enter, so I could change levels, huh? Do we do we dare want to try a higher level? Oh sure. All right, press the fire it's button here. So, oh, look out for that uh, mountain there, Steve. So, and look out for that uh, building. So, okay, here here we go. Okay, now I can start shooting. So this is, wow. Okay, this is a defender derivative, not exactly a clone. You do have people to rescue, and one of the things I was really impressed of with this game when I saw it is that the people are actually made out of text characters, and they're animated so well. And um, here they are. Here are the people. I have no idea how they did this, honestly. This, to me, is black magic. This is voodoo. I this, don't know this, how... I can explain exactly how this works. The way the okay. semi graphics works in the text modes is, is that you can do each individual scan line within the character. Okay. So they would combine letters, like the, the top point of an A would be the guy's head, and then the arms waving might be the far points of a, a wider character. Okay. But you get segments of each text character okay. in a row to actually create new characters, basically. Okay. Which was very okay. innovative. I haven't seen anybody else do yeah. this side. Yeah, yeah. So, what, so what this gave us was a black background, a black border, uh, nine colors on screen, or eight colors in, in addition to the black. Um, it gave us text for our high score readout. It gave us animated text characters that are actually now high resolution graphics mixed in with this. So, semi graphics is pretty cool. It's definitely a hybrid mode where you're mixing text, and technically, text is high resolution. Yeah. Um, you're mixing text in a medium to low resolution graphic with a fair amount of color. And so, these games, I feel, 
um, really showcase the color computers one and two to a capacity um, that is probably underappreciated. Yes, I agree. And, and like Nick, the, the big semi graphics game that impressed him when he first saw it was Guardian. I didn't see Guardian until the 2000s, to be honest. This was the one that really turned me on the semi graphics. So this had a, a great mode because I mean the, the terrain you're flying over is very well designed. Yes. The way they mix the text characters to make the people wave and stuff actually kind of fakes doing 256 by 192 in that game while mixing yeah. with the other eight colors. Yeah. And it's a very good gameplay. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you got to do. There's a lot of adventuring type things where you have to like rescue them from one city to another. Then a volcano threatens the second city. You, know, you have to rescue them again and then you get them out through the. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm not playing it well, but don't blame the game on my lack of skills. And uh, we are now looking at Junk Food by David Taylor. And Junk Food is, um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Okay, I'm a mouth. I've and been you have told to eat all before. the food except for the purple pickles. You have to avoid those. And this was okay. a Semi-Graphics 24 game. Um, but this was actually published with the source code listing in Burp. Rainbow Magazine. <laughs> I like that. Burp. So you, it's kind of a vertical thing. You move up and down. You have to eat the good food, avoid the bad food. Like there's our hamburgers and hot dogs. And green okay. pickles you can eat. Purple pickles you can. Yeah. So yeah. So okay. Cool. I, I don't think we need to show this much longer. We can kind of see it here. Yeah. But yeah. Um, again, very Atari esque, very Atari looking. So I'll grab a hamburger here. Grab a hot dog. We got a whole string of food down here. I got a nice little daisy chain of food. Okay. I, and I so, like the fact in this one that they actually published a source code list and explained how this worked in Rainbow Magazine so other people could take advantage of the semi graphics mode, unfortunately, as Nick knows. Yeah, now this is kind of cool. This is actually very cool. So I'm, uh, I'm basically a mouth with teeth. I'm eating food, and um, it's able to kind of, kind of stream some sound effects in the background. So it's sharing the graphics uh, animation CPU with the sound generation. Uh, and, and Nick, would you say that it's easier to manipulate less bytes of data when you're dealing with a low resolution? Are there some advantages to that? Yes, that's right. That's one thing I did mention earlier. The semi-graphics did have the um, advantage of, of uh, lower memory requirements, which was needed for, I guess, the 4K color computers and later the 16s. Um, you, you sacrifice horizontal resolution to gain more memory, I suppose. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It, it's actually it speeding up now, too. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, that was cool. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to show there. You saw the game. It was the a game. It just gets faster. It just gets faster, but this is a great use of semi graphics. It was a fun game. It was a playable game. It did not look terrible. It gave us sound effects, it gave us background noise. Um, and I was very happy with the experience. So this is another semi-graphics uh, game. This one's called Fire Draca. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Phoenix style game. Um, this one you can definitely see the blockiness of this mode. Um, I don't think it completely distracts from the gameplay. Um, but yeah, I have a shield around me here. That's the dragon. The dragon's kind of got scales on his chest. I'm assuming that's what those yellow lines are. Um, he's kind of just sitting there too, like a donkus. Okay, I got him. Now you have to dodge his uh, fire droppings. That's a technical so, gaming term. Donkus. <laughs> donkus. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, these guys. Uh, I just got finished with Taco Tuesday, so when you shoot them, they drop uh, their Montezuma's revenge on you. So, um, but cool. No, fun little game. Uh, you can um, hold down your shield, much like you had in Phoenix. You had a temporary um, life. Um, shield that lasted for a certain amount of time and you hold down the down arrow key to do that you have to hit the dragon exactly in its tail to kill it I just got killed um, I'm not sure how loudly you guys can hear the sounds the sounds are okay they're not terrible they are playing in the background there's kind of like a scratchy engine -y noise in the background and then there are fire shot sounds like your typical laser sounds and then um, many death sounds and stuff so um, it, it's a little bit flickery right now with that dragon but um, I think it looks pretty cool. I, I'm not sure what am I. Am I a spaceship? Am I a tank? I'm not exactly sure what I am. I can't remember from the explanation of the game. Yeah, there's okay, a... there he is. So you have to hit him in his tail and then avoid what he drops. And was it every fifth round, here's my bonus screen or something where you have to yeah, catch eggs? Yeah, every fifth eggs. round you get all the eggs you got to try to block. Yeah, but we're, I don't know that we're going to play that long. But what we're looking oh, look at the, look how big that dragon is. Oh, and he's shooting fire at me. So yeah, that animation is actually halfway decent. We got a bigger dragon on screen. Because the pixels are so big, it's pretty easy to make a large character on screen. 
Um, and he moved pretty quickly. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I got a skull up in there. That is actually pretty cool. The big purple dragons. Uh, you know what? I'm kind of impressed with this. Um, again, you can sit here and get critical on how good the graphics are. But at the end of the day, it's I to me, gameplay is more important than anything. Um, I just got killed. And this is fun. This is a kind of a phoenixy, demon attacky type game. Um, reminds me of many other games for Fire Draka Triumph. There he is. So, yeah, the animation's not bad. The dragon's turning his head around and everything. And um, not bad. You know, good use of color, decent use of sound, and, and a fun, enjoyable game. This game is called Cave Hunter. Uh, I have done a full review of this in the past, but we're doing this as part of the semi-graphic showcase. Uh, to me, it reminds me of Pac-Man because there, there's a maze involved. What you have to do is there's four dots that you have to grab from the maze and bring back into the cave. And once you've gotten all four... Now, is, oh, that I, I grabbed the wrong dot. It's the yellow dot, right? That was the power pill I just grabbed. It's the yellow dots in the bottom, right? So you have to grab a yellow dot. The gold bars and bring them up to the get top. Get the gold bar and bring them up to the top. And I have these donkus guys here that are trying to get me. Okay. So I just got donked by a donker. Um, and and like the one. game Grabber later on, like when you get killed if you're carrying one of the things, it actually yeah. gets left wherever you were in the maze at the time. But again, good use of color. Nine colors on screen. Um, decent sound. It's not, not, nothing overwhelming with sound, but the sound suits the game. Uh, you got me. Oh, you know what I remember too from playing this before? I'm um, having a flashback. I think if you're being chased, can you drop the gold bar so you can move a little faster? I don't remember. At this point here, I don't think it matters because I'll get one to the top. And we're just, we're kind of just, sh we're showing the graphics more than we're going to do a full gameplay here. This, this game is called Rail Runner. It is kind of like a Frogger game taking place on a train track. I'm noticing a lot of these are by Computerware. Yes. Computerware was a company that did a handful of semi-graphics games, one of my favorite being Pac-Tac. Um, and so this was a very, this was a very uh, popular feature of the, of the Computerware games where you got to select your level. I'm going to take the wimpy level. I am a wimp. Um, so yeah, so what you have to do here is you are the dude, you are crossing the lanes. There are like engine cars and there are the hand carts. And you have to make your way to the bottom to grab a hobo. I'm not sure if that term is still in favor with the political correct world <laughs> that we have these days. Oh. But that was like in the days of Frogger, you had to make it into your little safety box, your lily pad, whatever the heck it was, right? So hobos. At, at this case, I would think we would call them um, housing challenged Americans. And um, But yeah, we're going to try to rescue the hobos on the train station. And boom, I love those computerware sounds. So and we're going to hear that sound again when we look at Pac-Tac. So yeah, this is cool. I, I could see, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure Jim Gary has done this. And speaking of semi-graphics, uh, we should probably link um, Jim Gary's game channel because Jim Gary does almost all of his games in this kind of MC10 um, lower graphics modes. So um, I, know, I know Jim Gary has done a Frogger game. Um, a Frogger type game using his type of graphics. This, I think, it lends it. This, this, this graphics mode lends itself well to Frogger. At GSoft, we make games for the TRS-80 color computer, TRS-80 MC10, and Dragon computers. Our basic games cover the range of genres from arcade to text adventures to simulations to 3D dungeon crawls. This is our latest puzzle game from Japan, Fruit Panic. So come on, drop by our website and download our latest games. Um, the game we're going to play now is Pac-Tac. Again, another great computerware game. Another great semi-graphics game. So uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and you get to choose your skill levels. And I believe the difficulty level here was related to how many power pills were on the screen. Where in the easy mode, there were many more power pills on the screen. And, and speed I, to it. So here we go. We have Pac-Man. Um, I do love the luscious lips on this version of Pac-Man. His little crunching mouth is very well animated. He, you know what? It's kind of like a Botox. Yeah, I was just um, going to say. It was a I believe he could be a member of the Kardashians at this point here with these lips. So um, he's got that kind of Kardashian-esque Botoxy type lip thing going on. Um, but yeah, this is fun. This is a fun little Pac clone. I have done a full review on this, but we're doing this as a little quick preview for a semi-graphic showcase. These are the great computerware sounds, that explosion sound, uh, that when you, when you eat them when they're, uh, you know, with your power pill, that wheeew sound. I just, those sounds for me, I always remember these sounds. And they're just like so iconic. 
for a lot of these games. Alright, I just got wasted. Wow, I just got blown. I love that particle effect. This is really good. So this game is called Worm 2. It was originally called Wormhole. This version we have here is the second version. They renamed it to Worm 2. Okay. So this is Worm Tube, and it's kind of like your uh, 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 scramble type game. So you got a, it's a side-scrolling shooter. This one you have to shoot the gold blocks, and they turn into gold dust, and you pick up the dust. That's interesting. Um, great use of color. Scrolling is fairly smooth, but I think it's one of the things that Nick mentioned before is that because you have such a narrow horizontal resolution that the scrolling is never going to be perfectly smooth horizontally. Um, I like that uh, splatter pattern there, that kind of um, all the pixels on the screen there. Yeah, using all uh, the colors too. Yeah, using all the colors. So again, we can see that we've got full high resolution text for my name and my score, my, my level 2 on the screen there. Um, and then we've got, okay, so I can burst faster. Yeah. If you tap the F key a couple times when you're in the wide tunnels, you can really get moving too. Uh, okay, I'm at speed 9 now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fast. That's actually showing off some pretty fast scrolling now. All right, what is this game we're playing here, Curtis? Shootout at the OK Galaxy by Avalon Hill, programmed by Britt Monk, came out in 1981. It's, I think, Avalon Hill's very first Coco game, if I remember, and it's a really okay. early third-party one. Also, Seems like the, graphics. the X and Y is a little bit backwards. Yes. But, um, so this is a 3D space shooter. Kind of reminds me of Project Nebula a little bit. Actually, it is. It's kind of based on Star Raiders, which was the Atari 2600 one that kind of right. spawned all of these. The only thing you don't really see on the screen right now is a radar. There's just not enough resolution to have an on-screen radar. Well, if you hold that. down the M key, you'll get the long-range radar. Okay. So there's our map. Yeah, and it'll tell you, like, where there's places with aliens and, and also your supply ship because you have to go refuel and stuff. I span. I think I've run out of bullets. I've run out of ever. My, my energy, yeah, your energy is, is gone again. I hate it when that happens. I, that's what it happens with age. I lose my energy much quicker now. That's why I drink lots so. of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So shootout at the OK Galaxy, yet another fine and fabulous semi-graphics game for the Color Computer One and Two. <laughs> so what we're looking at here, folks, is as we're almost done with this showcase, um, the semi-graphics mode was very popular in the '80s, and it was, again, it was a mode that only properly worked well on the Color Computer One and Two. Now, what we're looking at now is a game that was done in the 21st century. This game came out sometime around 2011-ish, 12-ish, 13-ish, something like that. This was the um, beta version of Farfall from John Linville. I recently did a full review of the, uh, what was it called, the Golden Edition. It's the, it's the current edition he has now that's out on a cartridge that will be available at Coco Fest this month. And um, I am looking forward to buying another copy sealed of that. I have an open copy now. But again, this is a game that uses semi-graphics. The main difference here is this was a beta version. It doesn't have the background music, but it has most of the gameplay here. And so Farfall is a platformer where you move left and right and you have to um, continue to fall downwards and land on platforms and not be dragged up into the fire above. So you have to avoid, the, avoid getting burned and avoid falling through to a hole to your death. Um, just a cool, fun little game like that. So I just fell to my death. So it's a fun little game. It's a platformer. And um, it's kind of cool that this game was written in, you know, 2011-ish plus, whenever it was written. I'm sure the date's on here. So let me not guess. There you go, 2012. So this was the beta from 2012. So it's kind of cool that somebody was making a game recently that specifically took advantage of the semi-graphics mode, too. It's, you can't get any more retro and old school than to not only make a game for an old computer, but to make a game for an old computer using the lowest, almost crappiest form of graphics that that computer could do. You, you, know, you set the visual bar low and the technical challenge high when you, when you went for this goal here. Um, and but in no, some retro cool. fashion, actually manufacturing it on a cartridge. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when you buy it, and as a matter of fact, I have it right here. This is the new one. This is the Far Fall cartridge. And so this is the newest version with background music and in the updated difficulties and the changings of the colors. But John Linville's Far Fall from 2012 and the new version from 2016 um, is a new game you can buy for the color computer now. This is a new brew project that is going on for the Coco um, using semi-graphics, which is pretty awesome. So uh, this was definitely worth um, sneaking in here to the showcase. And we have one more to show you, so we'll be right back. 
Hey guys, it's the original gamer Stevie Stroh here, and I want to talk to you about the Coco Crew podcast, hosted by John Linville and Neil Blanchard. It is a delicious journey into retro computing, featuring the Tandy Color Computer. So if you are into vintage computing, retro computing, old school gaming, and especially if you're a Coco nut who's into the Color Computer, you gotta check out the Coco Crew podcast at cococrew.org. Also available on iTunes and Stitcher. And tell them the original gamer Stevie Stroh sent you. Yes. All right. Well, we are back, and this is the final um, semi graphics game in the showcase. This is Storm by Computerware. Computerware might as well have just been called Semi Graphicsware. Um, they made a ton of semi graphics games, and Storm is a game that Curtis and I just recorded a video on earlier today. It is a clone of the arcade game uh, known as Tempest. And uh, great use of the semi-graphics mode here. And, and I think you're going to see a lot of familiar features here on, um, on the um, thing. So I can change my difficulty level. I'm going to start off on level zero. And I forgot what the key was to start my game. Here it is. Okay, so here I am starting my game. And yeah, so you move around. You start off being able to move 360 degrees. You have to shoot all the bad guys that are coming towards you. The red guys are called millibars. They will actually follow you around. And, um, you know, it's just a cool, fun game. It's a good clone of um, Tempest. Tempest used the um, vector graphics, which were extremely high, extremely fine point lines. This is, you know, very jagged, very staircasey. Although, you see the ones on the side? Those ones on the side aren't that bad, you know? Yeah, because you're stretching out the the long horizontal actually would yeah. be normally if you're drawing a, a line. Those actually don't look that bad. And so yet another um, great use of semi-graphics. And uh, this was a commercial game. You had to pay for it, right? Computerware yep. was a commercial developer. They weren't a uh, you know mom and pop shop. Um, so let's go ahead and start this thing up here. This was level 15. Can you continue to go around in circles? I can. Yes, can. And so I don't know if I'll finish level 15, but if I can finish level 15, I'll get to see how the colors change to red. I'm not sure if luck will be with me. But I'm using the force on this one here. But yeah, this has been a fun little journey into um, semi-graphics on the color computer. Very underutilized, um, probably misunderstood, definitely underappreciated graphics mode of this computer. Um, what anybody can do is look at an old game and compare it to today and say that it doesn't look as good. The best looking color computer one and two games would not look as good as any game of today. But you can't always judge, just like myself as a person, can't judge me by my lack of good looks, right? It's what's inside that counts. And um, a game with a good heart and a great personality is something you want to find when you're dating online. Right, folks? So, um, and there you have it. That was Storm by Computerware, another great um, semi-graphics game, despite the ungreat gameplay that I just demonstrated. But I definitely want to thank my special guests who have been with me on this showcase here. I have the lovely and talented Curtis Boyle. Hello, and um, I just want to make one other mention <laughs> of semi-graphics. There were some other games that did use it. But they usually used it for, like, status displays between levels and, you know, that kind of thing. Like Ninja Warrior you used it to show your, your belts and your, your Ninja oh, Warrior. Oh, and like, a, like when the game first started, like an animated uh, graphic like, page. Even Radio Shack used it for a few things, like Gamaku Renji, the, the opening splash screen was in semi-graphics mode. And then, you know, like Ninja Warrior did, and, and uh, Berserk used it to show you how many men you left had left in your, your score. So right. that was... It was used more often than the games we showcased here, but not as the main core of the game. It was just used for bits and pieces in between. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. But yeah, so thanks for being along with us on this journey here, Curtis. And I also want to thank special guest Nick Morentis from Down Under. My pleasure. And Nick's first game on the color computer he wrote, which was called Neutroid 2, was uh, written specifically to take advantage of semi-graphics. And he was kind enough to talk to us all about that. And we appreciate you being with us this whole time, okay. um, going over all these games. I hope you all enjoyed this um, journey into color computer games, some obscure semi-graphics ones. And if you did, um, then please um, leave a like on this video and throw out a comment and let us know what you thought. We'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. Good eye and bye-bye now. Yeah. <sighs>